All right, everyone, welcome back once again to the channel. So uh, I've been reacting to a lot of short horror films, you guys. Um, I know I haven't reacted to any other type of content, but uh, I really have been enjoying myself checking out these uh, short horror stories. Um, now, after this video, I do want to react to another type, other type of content. Uh, but for right now, this is the last short horror film I will react to, um, probably until next month or so, um, or maybe you know, a um, couple couple days. I'll, I'll leave it, uh, I'll leave it a little break on that, and then I'll just come back to that. Uh, maybe do some try not to laughs. Also do uh, reactions to uh, underwater content. I've been really wanting to check out some underwater content, even though I am terrified of under the water, anything in the water really. Um, but I want to face my fears and check out some content from there maybe learn some things from there <laughs> so we'll see what i react to um very soon for that but for now i wanted to check out this film <clears throat> it is called death and the winemaker okay and this is by alter all right i've been checking out some content from alter and i have been really enjoying myself watching their content ever since i started all right so um this one here is animated and i haven't checked out an animated short horror film in a while so uh, I've mostly been doing a lot of live action uh, and by the way you guys um, I want to say thank you uh, first of all for you know watching along um, I really really appreciate it. it means a lot to me and also thank you for the comments and for the likes uh, and for sharing the videos I don't know if you guys have been doing that but um, just for liking the videos and watching the videos that's been good enough for me um, I'm really enjoying myself checking out this content so um, I don't know. Well, I, I have no idea what this one's about. I'm always excited when I have no idea what it's about. I'm just like hopping into these short horror films uh, blind with no knowledge of what's happening here. So all I know is it is very, very uh, catchy. You know, the, the YouTube thumbnail uh, and the title of this. I'm not sure what it's going to talk about, but I know it's going to um, talk about death because it's in the title. So I'm really excited to see how this is portrayed. And um, yeah. Let's go ahead and jump in and check this out together. Um, you guys want to check out the original video for yourselves? You can click in the link in the description down below and have a look at it on your own time. If not, you guys can check this out with me and then I can give you guys my thoughts after the, uh, the short horror film here. All right, so um, let's go ahead and jump right into this. And of course, let's get scared. I have some hot Cheetos today. If you have a hot Cheeto bag, go ahead and pull that out. Let's eat some hot Cheetos together while we're checking this out. Oh my god. Beautiful artwork. This is really, really nice artwork, man. Ne peut plus rien faire pour elle, mon enfant. Je suis désolé. Pourquoi la mort s'en prend-elle à nous Alors que c'est de la faute du vigneron C'est ce qu'on t'a raconté. Winemaker. Oui. Son égoïsme a mis la mort très en colère et... Et mm. maintenant nous en payons le prix. C'est vrai. Il s'est montré égoïste. Mais à l'origine de sa faute, il y avait du bon. Mm. Il y avait de l'amour. Beautiful silhouette. Okay, so it looks like we're uh, seeing the backstory of, of the uh, cause of the death there. Maybe. Beautiful man. Might do some artwork with my kids. Uh, with uh, rain, you know, I really love the way rain looks in front of the environment.
Uh oh. Bonjour Pierre. Mmh. Forbidden love, man. It just feels so much better, doesn't it? it tastes so much sweeter. It's an interesting house. Monsieur, voici les raisons de ma venue. Euh, je suis ici pour vous demander la main de votre fille, Mathilde. Oh, 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 oh. Vraiment Et pourquoi accorderais-je la main de ma fille à un pauvre vigneron comme toi Eh bien, c'est parce que j'ai réussi à créer le meilleur vin du monde. Oh, oh. Je veux faire goûter ta petite piquette que tu as mis trois années à produire. <rire> ben oui, on <rire> Si tu as le meilleur vin du monde, dans ce petit tonneau, je veux bien te donner ma fille. Parole d'honneur. Mm. Oh. oh, he said yes. Mm. You know, he's gonna... Alors Ton grain a du nez, il est vrai. Cependant, seule la personne la plus impartiale parmi les puissants pourra juger de sa vraie qualité. <rire> tu n'as qu'à aller donner une bouteille. Oh, pas Tiens <rire> Très bien, si telle est la condition, je partirai pour Rome dès demain. C'est ça wow. Faisons ça Nous reparlerons des noces à ton tour. Oh, wow. La route est bien trop périlleuse. Il oh, ne reviendra jamais. <laughs> On foot? Not even like a, uh, I don't know, carriage with a horse or horses or anything like that. It's just, he's just gonna go on foot. Et tu verras que personne. 
personne n'est plus impartial que moi. Je vais chercher chaque personne qui m'apparaît. Le vieillard, mmh. l'enfant, ou l'homme à son apogée, tous, sans exception, mourront par ma main. Même cette magnifique jeune fille oh, non. pour laquelle je suis en chemin. Alors, es-tu convaincu maintenant Pas tout à fait. Je suis à la recherche de la personne la plus impartiale parmi les puissants. Saurais-tu me montrer ta puissance Tu ne m'en crois pas capable. What Très impressionnant. Mais une dernière chose, et ensuite, je te laisse goûter à mon vin. Tu oses encore me défier. Prends garde à ne pas jouer avec ma patience. Tu es impressionnante. Il ne fait aucun doute. Cependant, la puissance ne se reflète-t-elle pas autrement que par la taille Évidemment. Bien. Je suis convaincu. Je te laisse déguster mon vin. I'm honestly still surprised, uh, surprised you survived the fall. That was a really high fall. <laughs> oh, c'est délicieux! built for him. We trapped her in there?
Regarde ce que tu as fait. Par ta faute, j'ai tant de travail à rattraper. Oh, il est trapper in there. Jesus. I think they were supposed to die a long time ago. qui faucha tous ceux sur son passage. Que l'horreur soit arrivée ou non. Oh, wow. It Et wasn't even their time arrivé au vigneron for some of them. Elle l'a condamné à rester ici-bas, à jamais. Jesus. Alors, il erre à travers le monde, It's him. combattant du mieux qu'il peut le mal dont il est responsable. It is him that was telling the story. Telle est sa malédiction. Et telle est l'origine de la peste noire dans notre pays. Oh my god. That was beautiful, man. All right, everybody, there you have it. That was Death and the Winemaker. Okay, so everything from the characters, uh, you know, their facial, their face expressions, the music, the environment, it was, it was all well done. I mean, it was very uh, sad, the environment, very dark, very horrific, and uh, the, the, the dialogue was great. The music was sad, I think I already said that, but it just worked really well, man, with this, with this whole thing, it worked really well. But it was more, to me, a tragedy than, than horror. Now, it did have horror elements when we, once we saw, you know, Death introduce herself as this young woman, right? With, uh, you know, a, an interesting design, very almost skeletal, but in having like skin on her. And then, of course, like a, a very hollow abdomen and stuff like that. Uh, very interesting design for that, but I really liked it. Very, very interesting. So I, I love how this um, this started to happen in like in a, in a sequence of events, you know. We, we get this young boy who falls in love, right? Well, first it starts off with the aftermath of things, right? We get this sort of uh, fast forward uh, clip where, you know, there's a young, there's a mom dying in, a de in, a, in her bed and there's her daughter is very sad because she's dying. And so the old man is, uh, the old man that's talking, you know, eventually goes back to the story of how, uh, you know, how these, like this plague came to be, you know, this mom's dying from the plague. So he starts to talk about this plague. This is, this is how I understood it. Um, and so we, that's when we go back and get introduced to the whole beginning, right? So this young kid falls in love with a girl. Uh, he's, he turns out he's the winemaker, <coughs> you know, so excuse me. He's growing these grapes, right, in the garden. And then so this is how he makes the wine, right? So um, eventually he goes and takes it to the father of the girl that he loves. And then, of course, the father sends him out to, to the Pope in Rome to go have him taste the wine in order for him to really believe that it's a quality wine, that it's good. And then he will hand his daughter to him, like in marriage, you know, allow his daughter to marry him. So now we get this whole thing happening where he goes to Rome 
and then he falls and then uh you know like a really high level which i'm surprised he survived but he falls on like a stack of hay which you know kind of saves his fall there and then he meets death you know we get introduced to death and I, as I described, you know, it's this like sort of feminine look, looking entity uh, and with a, a, a very interesting voice. I love the voice design, man. That was really good. Uh, it's very hollow, you know, very, very dead, very death like and sad almost. Very, very well done. And so uh, he tricks her into tasting his wine into, you know, because we have her like scaling up into a bigger size and stuff. And he's like, oh, can you know, can you you can be uh you can be scary or threatening or dangerous even when you're smaller. You don't have to be a big size. And she goes, okay. So then she shrinks down and then eventually, you know, she turns into a scorpion and she goes into the barrel to taste the wine and traps her in there, right? So this to me already started this sort of symbolism of him cheating death or him uh, him cheating death towards, uh, towards the girl that he loved, right? Because um, this death entity mentioned a couple people that were on the list, right? Inside the hourglass, we see all these images happening. And so we see all these people, middle-aged man or whatever, a man in his prime, an old man, a young kid. And then eventually the, 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 the young girl that he loves. But he tricks death and then traps her into the barrel, which right there, uh, it symbolized to me, you know, I didn't get it right away, but it symbolized to me, you know, thinking, looking back since the end, I saw the whole story now. Uh, he did not allow death to happen to his to his lover, right? To the girl that he loves. And I mean, it's just like you cannot cheat death, you know? This death happens when it happens. It's going to come to you, to us, to anybody. When it comes, it doesn't matter where we are, how young, how old, it doesn't matter. Uh, rich, poor, you know, fool or hungry. <laughs> it's just going to come. So this kid, you know, after he traps her, he goes. And then, he, of course, he has the Pope taste the wine. And then everything just, you know... Just turns out well. He his he he uh, succeeds in that. The Pope loves his wine, and then eventually we sh- sort of cuts to this, um, you know, very fast sequence where like the, the the time is ticking, and then so he ends up marrying the girl. He has a family with her, and then they grow old together. But when we get this part when they're old already, she's already sad. She's depressed. She wants to die. Um, but I, I was seeing her behavior, and it's like, you know, is she just depressed because she's old? I mean. Growing old is beautiful, you know, to me, it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, you've experienced all this life, all these things in life, you know, bad and good, whatever it is, uh, but you've experienced it. But it's like, it's not, she wasn't depressed while she was old, right? Because she was old. It's because she needed to die at a young age. But this, uh, you know, the, the kid, uh, what's his name? Peter, right? I think he didn't allow this to happen because he, he trapped death in that barrel. So it all just went wrong from there. But it took all of a lifetime for his karma to come back. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was crazy because once he was old, he was like, oh, we're good. You know, I, I got what I wanted. But he cheated death. He trapped death in this barrel. So finally, uh, he goes back and then, um, well, you know, I forgot to mention when he was younger, he buries the barrel where he trapped death, right? In the, in the wine barrel. He buries it in the dirt and then all this stuff, just all his life, he just lives it, right? And then at the end of his life, it sort of starts to haunt him now. So then he, he uh, what's it called, digs it out again, the barrel, and then lets death out. And death is like, you know, all like old and, and sort of, you know, it's, 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 she's been in there trapped for years, you know? Uh, and so all of this work that she had to do, right? So like, you know, taking people's lives because with, you know, she's death, like death comes for whoever. Since she was trapped in this barrel, she couldn't do that. So all these people were living their, their lives, right? And their time for death didn't even come. So they were all like beyond the point of old. They were like brittle, really like almost zombie looking, you know? They could never die, you know? And his wife was like tired. She was she was super old and just ready to die. But death couldn't come because there was no death, right? Death was trapped in the barrel. So once he lets her out, you know, I realized that death calls Peter a uh, young winemaker, right? Now, I don't know why she did that. I mean, he's clearly old, but maybe it's just like, I, I guess it's to sort of remind him that she did not forget him he, ever since that, you know, that part of his life when he trapped her in the barrel, tricked her into getting small and trapped her in there. So it's like sort of reminding him, you know, hey, young kid, right? doesn't matter how many years has gone by. 
she's still the he's still the same in her eyes, you know. So she didn't forget about that. So I think ba that's what I kind of took from it because she referred to him as the young winemaker. And so then she tells him, you know, I've spent all these years in here. I have so much work backed up. Now I gotta just catch up, right? But she ends up going on like a you know rage uh, a rage episode or whatever and just kills everybody you know just uh, spreads a plague and then just sucks everybody's soul and and completely just age and you know his he starts with his wife first right uh just breaks into the under from under the ground like you know mega sized titan or whatever and then just takes her soul uh and then does that to everybody else in the town except for peter right he is actually now cursed of living forever and you know and and that's it, just witnessing all this stuff happening around him, this plague, all these people dying. And so now what he does is um, he just goes around trying to help people uh, that are suffering from the plague. And so now finally we go back to that first scene that we were introduced to where he's in, uh, talking to this little girl uh, right beside the you know her mother's deathbed and saying, I couldn't do anything about it because the plague killed her. Uh, that's what I'm assuming there, you know? And so I guess now he's just sort of going back and sort of, uh, undoing everything he's done or, or trying to make up for what he did right and by saving all these people's lives but he's not being successful you know judging by his look he's very sad and all this stuff he can't die his love the love of his life or the the younger that he wanted uh you know she he lived with her until she was old but then she died tragically uh and so yeah man it just it, it just gets really sad at the end and so i was just like the all that i got from this is is you know you cannot beat death. You can't cheat death. Now, of course, this is obviously impossible in real life. You can't just like f trick death into not killing you or taking you. Uh, if you don't want to die yet, you just trick it into not taking you. You know, you're, you're, we're, we're done when it's our time. Um, but this was beautifully interpreted. You know, this was obviously a, a fictional, uh, but it was just beautifully interpreted because this, this kid tried to, tried to cheat a, a, sup a, a, a supernatural thing, a natural thing, you know? Uh, beyond our control and then everything just sort of you know came came down as just terrible down the road it was just horrible at first right on the short run he was just he was just having the time of his life he was uh, getting everything he wanted uh he was successful with his wine right and so all of this stuff was just building up but the foundation of all of that was just not a good one you know so at the end, it all just caught up to him at the end of his life. And so it was just terrible. So we all just kind of like, you know, this to me reminded me of how like we all want to be immortal. Sometimes we all want to just live forever. Uh, me personally, I, when I was younger in my twenties, I, I was just, uh, you know, and I still am I'm to an extent, right? But now I'm more, uh, I'm more, uh, conscious of things. But before I, I really loved to collect things, you know, and I was just like, man, I wish I could just live forever. And I could have all these things with me, like material wise, I'm talking about. I love to collect all of these things, uh, specifically with technology, uh, you know, and like, uh, action figures, like collectibles. I loved all of that stuff and I still do, but, um, I wanted to just like stay here in this earth for as long as possible, even past my like, you know, nineties or whatever and still have that with me. I know it's kind of crazy, right? But I, I was kind of thinking that way. Uh, to an extent, not like in an insane way, but I was just like, man, that'd be cool if I, if I can, you know, keep this forever, take this with me in a, in a, you know, in, on, on a hearse or whatever, when I, when I head out, you know what I'm saying? Attach the U-Haul to the hearse. Like they say, uh, you can't take, you know, whatever, you can't take the U-Haul on a hearse or something like that. Attach that to the hearse and then head out to, to heaven, take all that stuff with me. But that's just not going to happen. You know, now it's like, I know that this stuff is temporary. Everything is temporary. Everything, everyone around us is temporary. And eventually we're going to die. You know, that's the truth. So all this we have around us, we can't just be like, uh, let it build our, our ego or our pride. Like, look what I got, man. I got so much money. Oh, look what I got. I got this. I got that. Because we, it's all being, it's all being, uh, what is it called? Like, uh, lent out to us. It's, it's, we're borrowing this. And our job is to take care of everything we have. But when the time comes for that to leave or for that person to leave, we have to let that go. You know, and Peter, in this in this story could not accept that you know he could not let this go he could not let this young girl uh die he couldn't let that happen so he did whatever he could by tricking death right to to not allow that to happen and that was like yo man that was you shouldn't have done that you know how can you just possibly assume that things are going to be great when you trick somebody into something negative right into 
trapping them in a barrel and, and, and burying them under the dirt for years. You know, you can't just do that. So yeah, man, this is crazy stuff. It really made me think about real, real life here. You know, very, this is a really well written story. I really enjoyed myself. You guys, I love the animation. I love the art, man. This was really well done. Uh, alter, man. I don't, I don't know how you guys do it. You guys are doing a great job. I am, if y'all don't mind, like I'm taking some inspiration from your work and I'm just, uh, applying it into mine because I really want to make a good or I, well, I'm making my horror story, but I really want to make a successful horror story once I present it, you know, have, have this like big effect, uh, for the viewer. So whoever views it says, Hey man, this, this is, he did a good job, but the story part is always hard to, to, to get right. You know what I mean? You can design all this, all these characters, make these monsters, whatever. But if the story is not just, it's not there, then it's just not there. You know what I mean? So I always like to watch a good story just like this one here and then get some good inspiration from it. So uh, let me, let me know what you guys thought about this. Did it make you think about real life here? You know, uh, uh, did it, what did it make you think about? Uh, and so did you like the music? I loved all the music here. I love the characters. I love the, the design of death. Very hollow, right? Very sort of old, lifeless. There was nothing there. It was just a voice and a body, you know, um, very hollow voice. I loved all of that. The music was great. Environment was great. Art was great. I got nothing to complain about here, man. This was good. I got nothing to nitpick. This was really well done. And so whatever, you know, I said, I think I said it took three years to do this down in the description. Uh, that was all worth it, man. It, this was well done uh, for the whole team that did this. Kudos to you guys. You guys did a great job. Uh, and I'm just, you know, I'm very, really inspired by this. So let me know what you guys thought about this down in the comment section and what you guys thought about my thoughts on this. Uh, you know, maybe I got something wrong here. So let me know down below. And of course, uh, give this video a like, subscribe to this channel, and then share this video with your friends if you guys have any, which I'm sure you do. I don't have friends, but it's fine. I like being alone. So you guys take care of yourselves <laughs> and have a good day. All right. Peace.